For one of my recent projects, I built an LED drum kit, which you can see here behind me. If you haven't seen the video yet, feel free to check it out somewhere up here. In the video I showed how I built it and the final result, but one thing I didn't go into too much detail about was the code behind it. Which is funny because that's the bit I spent the most time on, so I thought it deserved a video of its own. So if you're into computer science, algorithm design, or just want to see how it works, feel free to stick around. And things are going to get nerdy. I'm going to go into as much detail as I can, but I'll assume that you know some basic programming. So here's the intro so I can transition. To recap the basic setup, we have an electric drum kit and a Raspberry Pi, where the MIDI output from the kit connects to the Pi, and the Pi connects to the LEDs. A script running on the Pi constantly checks for new MIDI messages while also constantly sending colour values to the strip, which is just zero values until there's a hit. When a hit finally occurs, it sends a MIDI message which is captured by the Pi. My algorithm then calculates the colours and the sections of the LED strip to light, sending it to the LEDs mounted to the kit. The trickiest part is splitting the LED animations across multiple drums. Just to clarify, this can probably all be done by an Arduino too. I chose a Pi to make use of some handy Python libraries for capturing MIDI and controlling the LEDs. Plus I'm better at coding in Python. By the way, all of my code and the materials that I used to build the LED drums are linked in the description. By the time this video is out, the code should be more up to date, I hope. So first thing we want to do is capture the MIDI messages from the drum kit. We just need to connect our MIDI instrument to the Pi. So I can SSH into my local Pi. And then I can use these Python libraries to help. Mido and RT MIDI. Now I already have them installed, so no need to run it. But now we can open up a Python shell, import our Mido package. And then with this command, we can list out all of the MIDI devices that are connected to the Pi. And you can see here we have my Roland TD17 connected. With this name, we can open up a MIDI connection, mido.open, input, and then as our argument, we'll paste this name, call that import. Then we can use a standard for loop just to print out each message as it comes in. I just have to run over and hit the drum. But if I'm going to explain things properly, I may as well go all in. I warned you about the nerdiness. What is MIDI? MIDI stands for Music Instrument Digital Interface. It's a technical communications protocol. Or simply, it's a standard type of digital message which can be used to control audio. Or in this case, lighting. So if we look closer at this MIDI note that just came in, this was a single drum hit on the electric drum kit's snare. We can see there's two messages, and if we look closer at the properties we can see why. The first property tells us note on, note off. For a drum kit this doesn't really make sense, but for something like a keyboard, this would tell us when we press down the key, and this would tell us when we let go of the key. Channel denotes which range of note numbers we're using. The next one is note, where the number tells us which pad we've hit, or for a keyboard it would be which key, etc. Velocity basically describes how hard it's been hit, and time I'm not too sure about. But that's out of the scope of this project. The only MIDI parameters we actually need for this are note number and velocity. The note number will be used to indicate which LEDs to toggle, and the velocity linked to the brightness. Simply, harder hits are brighter. Now we have the notes, we need to map it to the LED strip, but there's no point in mapping it if we can't control the LEDs. The strip I chose is a WS2812B strip. A lot of numbers and letters that I don't know what they mean, but it has the capability of individually addressable pixels. To set up the basics for controlling them, I followed the instructions from this page, which is also linked below. This is just one way of doing it, by the way. There's other LED types and likely other code libraries that do the same thing, but in this video I'll be using the libraries here. With the help of my electronic paper, I can explain how the libraries work and how my script uses them. Up here we have what the code is doing, and here is what the strip might look like, each one of these being a single LED. Perfect circles, I must say. In its simplest form, we have a strip object with two useful functions, show and set pixel. Set pixel will assign a color value to a given pixel. So for a strip of 300 LEDs, this needs to be called 300 times. This physically won't turn on the LED though. The color value is only stored in the object. 
The show method takes care of that, but there's a bit of a workflow to consider. If we look at the array storing the color values, well, in this case, just on and off, everything will start as off, then calling set pixel three, let's say, will change this value here. Now the show method comes into play. Calling it will go through each value in the array, and in this case, turn on the LED in this position. However, one thing it also does is wipe all the previously stored values, which makes things tough when it comes to the drums, but I'll get back to that. To light a whole section of the strip, set pixel will need to be called multiple times before calling show. Of course, the real version uses red, green, and blue color values instead of on and off. That is, each LED unit has a small red, green, and blue bulb, and together at the same level they make white. That's just basic colour science. Now, for a whole drum kit, a single LED strip can be cut and rewired so there's LEDs on each drum. My code can then map which LED numbers correspond to which drum. Here, for example, if each pad has three LEDs, then the corresponding MIDI note for the pad will trigger a set pixel for all these LEDs and then strip.show. In reality, it's more like 60 LEDs, but that takes too long to draw. To control the rest of the drums, we can just rinse and repeat, right? Well, no. That's where the value wiping becomes a problem. Think of the use case. Drums aren't all hit at the same time. The same drum can be hit within the previous animation time. The main reason for this being an issue with Python itself. Python itself is a consecutive language. That is, it basically executes code one line after another. So if we hit one drum, then the animation code needs to finish before the next animation will run. Every hit will just stack up and not be in real time. So there is a way to do two things at once with Python by using a thread, a thread being a separate parallel running process. How about a thread corresponding to each drum? I thought this was an easy solution to the problem, but if a drum is hit within the animation time from a previous hit, then it's the same problem as before, they just stack up. Maybe in that case, the code could just check if a thread already exists for that drum and then kill it before starting a new one. But putting out fires like that could lead to other issues in future. This solution could also lead to having as many threads going as there are drum pads in my case 10. They are short-lived, but it's still not ideal to be using so many parallel resources. This approach would kind of be considered brute force, I suppose, making things work and then adding more just to solve issues as they arise. But there is one other issue that I've mentioned but not talked about in this implementation. All 10 threads are accessing the same resource. There's only one strip object in the code and each will call the show method, resetting and wiping the color values, which results in only one part of the strip being on at any time. I discovered this during the first testing and it ruined the cool effect, so back to the drawing board. Which led me to what I think is the perfect solution. A way to do it with only two threads, no matter how many pads. But before I explain it, I challenge you to come up with your own solution. Pause the video even, take a couple of minutes and see if you can figure it out. All right, I assume at this point you've either paused or you're just waiting for me to explain it. Anyway, took a lot of trial and error, late night coding, a couple of scares thinking that I'd burnt out the LEDs, which aren't cheap by the way, but I solved it. Obviously, otherwise that other video wouldn't have come out. Waiting for the code to finish is the main issue and there's two things that need to be constantly available. Listening for new MIDI messages and sending colors to the strip. Low latency is also something else to keep in mind, otherwise the effect wouldn't work. But at least I think Roland drums are rated for a reaction time of less than three milliseconds or something, so the message latency won't be an issue. I started off with one thread to listen to MIDI messages. Once it gets one, it passes it off to another thread as soon as possible to handle it, so it can go back to listening for more messages. In the actual code, passing off the message is done by using Python queues. When the MIDI message comes in, it's sent to this queue. The thread for handling the message in its simplest form is a loop. Starting off by checking the queue for new messages, when there's one there, it's popped off the queue and into the rest of the loop. The next step is some basic logic to determine what LED numbers are affected, which in this case is read from a predefined config file. But then there's the strip resetting colors issue. Well, by adding a kind of middle ground array that stores color values for all LED numbers, we can avoid wiping them. The trade-off is that each loop will have to read everything in this array and send it all to the strip. So the strip is basically getting reset constantly. It won't appear like this to the naked eye though. Naturally, the next part of the loop in that case will be to take the LED numbers calculated from the MIDI message and set their new color in the middle ground array. There is one more step in the loop, but let's skip it for a sec and move to sending the values to the strip. Now the LEDs are on and we're into the next iteration of the loop. If it continued as is, then the LEDs would never turn on. So in the third step, I introduced a change factor to the color values to build animations. 
So, for example, if in our first iteration we set a color value to 100% brightness, then in the second iteration it'll check the middle ground array for values that aren't zero. If they aren't, then the value is set to minus one of its initial value. Doing this continuously loop after loop will always send values to zero, producing a fade out effect. So far I've only implemented the one animation type, but it should be easy enough to add more by just modifying the change factor logic. And that's it. The loop continues, two threads, multiple drums, animations, real-time response, or at least the appearance of real-time. Everything else like the web page for selecting colors is just trivial extra stuff. Once again, if you figured out your own way of doing it, please let me know in the comments. I don't know if mine is the perfect solution, I'm still trying to improve, but it's a fun and frustrating problem to figure out. Also, if you made it this far in the video listening to me talk about code for 10 plus minutes, I'm guessing you like the video. Please consider subscribing and looking at everything else I have to offer in the form of YouTube videos. But an even better reason for subscribing is the LED drum kit version 2 I'm working on at the moment. This time I've enlisted the use of a 3D printer, I've got more LEDs and I'm adding it to my acoustic drum kit. So you're not going to want to miss that. But anyway, thanks for watching this and I'll see you in the next one.